Hey, good evening. I hope everybody's doing well tonight. Just on a minute late than I normally am. Was watching a, a movie with my kids and just got them to bed. A older movie, uh, Seven Brides for Seven Brothers. And uh, just uh, uh, um, one of my more favorite older movies. And uh, you'll have to, if you haven't seen it, recommend it uh, strongly. And uh, you'll enjoy it. It's, it's great. But uh, anyhow, I'm wearing my UPS shirt uh, tonight. And of course, uh, UPS is, I mean, it's a, it's a good company to work for, but it was the worst job I ever had and uh, uh, for a lot of reasons, but uh, I have some great stories. Um, uh, I would pray to get fired. And uh, as I worked the early shift, I worked from about 2 a.m. to 9 a.m. And uh, many a times I pray, Lord, let me get fired. And uh, God said, no, you're not going to get fired. So one of my bosses chewing me out one time i just kind of gave it back to him and somebody leaned over to me in that meeting and said dude you're gonna get fired you don't you keep running your mouth and uh, i said no i'm not gonna get fired i prayed this morning i'd get fired and god said i'm not gonna so this guy's not gonna do anything i said it out loud and got up and walked out of the meeting <laughs> of course i had to go back and apologize to my boss for doing that and had to apologize to the lord as well but uh, uh some other stories for another time but uh we're talking about tonight um, keeping positive with what the future holds. And, you know, all of our lives have been impacted. Um, and, and the reality is, is that uh, they're probably going to be impacted a lot longer than any of us wants them to be. And, uh, you know, I believe that there could be residuals of the things that we're dealing with for, I mean, uh, a couple of years, really, uh, to some effect. Uh, no one really for sure knows the future, but, uh, uh, you know, we're, we're um, I was just reading uh, over the notes from a webinar um, from a group called the NCLL. It's a big bunch of Christian lawyers, and, you know, they're just, you know, they're, they're talking to people on Capitol Hill and different things like that. And uh, basically, you know, their, their recommendations for churches, and of course this is uh, worldwide, or not worldwide, but countrywide, and, and there's a lot of variation there. But they're saying, you know, realistically, uh, if you're in a suburban area, um, you, you could hope to start holding church services on a more regular type of prototypical church, not online, uh, sometime in June. And if you're in an urban area, it might be July. And, uh, uh, you know, that's kind of something I already kind of got in my head and preparing for. And, of course, we'll just operate by what the state of Massachusetts uh, uh, tells us uh, we have to do. And, and uh, we'll, we'll adhere to that. And, uh, but we want to try to get back to a, some sense of normalcy as soon as we can in a safe manner. But the reality is, is that that's going to be an incremental process. And there's going to be some challenging times uh, that we're going to have to uh, face. I mean, the, the, this this webinar, the notes were recommending that when you do start having services, that you keep people six feet apart. Well, you know, for some places that's not a problem. But if you've ever been to Lifeline Baptist Church on a Sunday morning, you know we're packed in there like sardines. So that can be very challenging uh, to have people only six feet apart. And, you know, we're going to have to figure that out. And, uh, um, you know... Uh, uh, that's not a good long-term prognosis for us, but we'll figure it out. And, you know, really when you think about it, that's how it is with some of your jobs. I mean, uh, some of you have lost jobs. Um, a lot of people that have still have their jobs, their jobs have gotten exponentially more challenging, more difficult, and you're figuring that out. And, uh, you know, you're being asked to do more sometimes for less. And, uh, you know, that's really, really challenging. And, you know... Uh, for those of you that are, have lost jobs, I mean, the future doesn't look the greatest right now to, to get them back anytime soon. I mean, you hope it does, but you have to be realistic in uh, uh, certain situations. And, and uh, you know, uh, so there's a lot. If, if you like to worry, man, there is endless things for you to worry about. If you're like a worry wart that just looks for things to stress out about, this is like, you know, just fresh material every day for you to spaz out about. And But that's not what God desires for us to do. That's not God's plan for our life today. And so, you know, I want to share a verse with you out of Joshua chapter 1 and verse 9. And uh, it says this, Have I not commanded thee, be strong and of good courage? Be not afraid, neither be thou dismayed. 
for the Lord thy God is with thee whithersoever thou goest. Listen, there's a lot of negative that you could dwell on right now, but I want to help you to focus in on some positive things uh, that are going on. And, you know, the Bible tells us to be strong and of good courage. And, you know, this time requires strength, strength to make tough choices. And my, my dog is like pacing around and, uh, c- come here, come here. Knock it off, all right? Here, I'll let you see her. There she is, say hi. All right. There, she's just, I don't know what she's doing. She's getting all excited and trying to play tug of war with me. But uh, anyhow, uh, you know, be strong and of good courage. And, and so you got to have strength to make tough choices and, and choices that maybe not everybody, you know, approves of, but you got to do what's best uh, for you, your family. Uh, for me, I'm trying to do what's best for, for the, my family and, and the church as well. Uh, so these are all challenging things. And But in this time where we are required of the Lord to be strong, we need to be uh, of good courage and not dismayed. Don't get down. Don't allow yourself to become distraught. Don't give up. Don't become hopeless. Um, and and instead, you you need to be encouraged and encourage yourself in in the Lord. And you know why should be encouraged? Well, the Scripture tells us that the Lord is with us wherever we go. And, you know, God, as I think of Lifeline Baptist Church, you know, God knows exactly where our church is headed before it gets there. You know, I think about this, how God set our church up with online giving before we knew we needed it. We had it already set up to go, and, and it worked out wonderfully. You know, God set us up with the, the licensing. Uh, this is really, uh, Roger did this, but... God put it on his heart uh, months ago to set us up with the licensing so that you know now that we have the the proper software to put the words up on the the screen during our live stream see you can't just do that it's technically not legal unless you have uh, licensing for it well we already had it and you know God knew we were going to need all these things before we did and he put it upon people's hearts to to get it all set up look god's taking care of us and you know what if we can look back and see god's hand taking care of us then then that should give us confidence that moving forward he will do the same and the same is true for you if god has brought you as far as he has and got you to this place and you can see his hand working in all the things that have been accomplished then then that enables you to be of good courage and not be dismayed as the Bible talks about, but be of good courage that he will get you through the next part. Now, will he get you the same, take you through this next bit the same way he got you to where you're at? Probably not. He's probably going to go a different way with it because God's never going to be in a box. God's never going to, uh, you know, just do the same thing the same way so that you, that he's predictable. Why? Because he can do anything any way he wants and he wants you to understand his greatness and his powerfulness and his ability to do things that you think are impossible. And so the Lord is with you. If you know him as your Savior, if you've trusted him, the Lord is with you. And he has a plan to bring you through, whether it's your family, whether it's your business, whether it's your church. God has a plan to bring you through what you're dealing with. Now you want to know what it is. Yeah, we all want to know what it is. But faith is the substance of things not seen. And the fact of the matter is, is that you're going to have to go down a path where you may not know what the next step is till you're right about to take it. And that's faith, living by faith. The just shall live by faith. And it doesn't mean the path is easy. But and it doesn't mean that you don't have to encourage yourself sometime in the Lord. But just remember that as the scripture says, again, I'll read it to you. Be strong and of good courage. Be not afraid. Neither be thou dismayed, for the Lord thy God is with thee whithersoever thou goest. Wherever you go, whatever you're doing, if you walk with God, He's there with you. So now, what does that mean for the future of, say, Lifeline? Well, yeah, it's hard to say. You know, I don't exactly know what exactly the, the details of the future is, is going to be. It's, it's hard to know. 
Uh, but here's what I do know. Wherever uh, we're, we're going to follow what the state tells us to do. Okay. And uh, right now it's 10 people or less for service. And so we offer three online services on Sunday and uh, up to, to 10 people can come in. Most of them are helping with the service to put on a good, uh, decent online product. And, and uh, uh, but, but, you know, when we, we're allowed to have more people, 25, we'll have 25 and we'll expand services. We'll figure it out. The we'll, Lord will guide us. And, and, and as the numbers increase that we can have, that's what we'll do. But, you know, maybe a long while before we can have a church all together again. You know, uh, we might have to go to multiple services uh, on Sunday mornings for, for a while. Uh, even when things start to get back to normal, just to keep the crowd size down. I, I don't know. You know, might have to, you know what we're going to have to do? We're going to have to adapt. You know, if you struggle with adapting in life, this is a wonderful time for you to address that weakness. Because you've got to adapt. You've got to adjust the way you do things. And you've got to allow the Lord to work and just guide you. But whatever you do, and wherever you go, and wherever the church goes, wherever your business goes, the Lord will be with you. The Lord will be with us. That's the most important thing. And, and the, the fact that uh, when the Lord's with us, it gives me great confidence. It'll work out for His glory. We just need to be amendable to what God is doing. You need to be in your own life amendable to what God is doing. I know a lot of people that like to plan. I mean, man, I've met 18-year-olds that got their whole life planned out. And... Uh, uh, I, I meet a lot of people that have got uh, uh, everything planned out. And that's great. I, I'm not against planning. But what happens when your plan doesn't work? Because I'm pretty sure none of you, including me, planned on this. Not part of the plan. All right? Well, this is a little secret I learned after a few years of pastoring. Whatever my plan is, one is probably a good one. Two, it's not going to happen that way. Whatever you got concocted in your head of how things are going to go, it's just not going to happen that way. Why? Well, you get all the glory. God doesn't get any of it. And so, you know, the Lord's going to adjust things, and you have to be amendable to that, pliable, all right? You have to be able to, to flex your faith a little bit and trust God when things don't go according to your plan. Plus, you got to know that God's just prepared you uh, through the previous trials to prepare you for what's coming next. And it's going to stretch you. And the things that lie ahead in the coming months are going to stretch us. And it's okay. There's a lot of you know, negative stuff going on right now. But what we can do is allow us to uh, grow in our faith. All right? And, you, you know, let me, let me add this. It was based on a, a conversation I was having with one of the men in our church who's home a lot right now because he's not working. And, uh, and, and you know, he's, uh, he's a good man. And, uh, and he said, Pastor, why do Christians fight online so much? He said, it's very discouraging. And I said, that's a great question. And I don't know. But I'll let you know this, it's not a new thing. It's been going on for a long time. And uh, I said it's a very poor testimony. You know, listen, you're going to have people you don't agree with. Leave them alone. I mean, I don't understand why people feel like it's their obligation to espouse their wisdom on everybody else's Facebook posts. I've just never understood that. Like, there's a lot of garbage out there. I don't say two words about it. Why? You write to your opinion. You know, if you want my, if they wanted my opinion, they'd ask me. It's it's like it's like these posts. I thank the Lord. I really haven't had too much negativity on on the comments because I don't have time for that. All right, I'm trying to help our people, and if you're you know not a part of our church and you tune in and it's a blessing to you, wonderful, great. And if you think I'm a loser and you don't want to listen to me, that's fine too. Don't tune in. I, I'm not offended by that at all. But what I want to do is be a blessing to our people and anybody else. But I, you know, we don't have time. For online argument that's that's foolishness that's a waste of time it's not glorifying to the cause of christ and it makes lots of people think christians are, are foolish and and sometimes we are in our behavior and you know but i i just want to say this in, in closing that uh, you know in your personal life god is is uh doing some things and it's going to be a while before things return to normal i i think there's a, a hope that things will get back to normal but I think as each day goes by, there's this reality setting in that uh, 
it's, it's going to be a while before some sense of normalcy returns. And that's going to affect every facet of our lives. And don't let that depress you. Don't let that ruin you. Don't let that affect you. Instead, embrace the change. Embrace the reality that the Lord has allowed. Again, if you go back to the previous messages, He's not caused this, but He has allowed this, and there are reasons that are beyond us for that. But embrace the work that God is doing in people's lives. I'm having more discussions with people about the Lord electronically than I can remember. And, and I'm thankful for that. And I believe that God is doing something in some people's lives. Let's give the time for that to occur. And so embrace the working of God in your own life. And He's with you to help you with whatever He is allowing to happen. So in doing that, be strong. It's not easy. And be of good courage. Not dismayed. Don't get down. Stay up. Why? God's still on the throne. He's going to see you through this. You may not know how. No one knows how. But just trust Him. He'll get you through. I thank you for tuning in today. I hope it was a blessing. We'll be back at it tomorrow night. God bless you. Take care. Bye.